a comment on Facebook yesterday that just really abhorred me. <laughs> so, how you use that word? And it was this. Someone was asking, like, I've heard that in order to reduce, like, the burn that I get when I'm lifting, I've heard people say that they'll take uh, baking soda or Tums in order to decrease this. And as somebody who does a lot of work with the gut microbiome and the digestive tract for a living, I was like, wait, what? And sure enough, I Google it and there's all this stuff about, here's how you can just reduce your lactic acid production. Just take a bunch of baking soda. And I'm like, and this is like recommended. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. I like immediately texted one of my friends who specializes in the gut microbiome. I was like, dude, she used to be a trainer too. I'm like, did you know people do this? And she's like, holy crap. We're both just like, okay, here's the deal. Here's what I want to say. Most people on the planet right now are dealing with low stomach acid. Okay. This is a major issue that leads to issues all the way down the digestive tract. And the reason for this is because of our stressful lifestyles, our toxins, and our food, all of it, okay? And so that is like the beginning place. You want a very acidic stomach. And we have this alkaline obsession right now. And I don't think people are thinking about this. So I just wanted to say this because really like we have this like weird thing that's like all over nutrition. It's just like, you gotta be more alkaline, gotta be more alkaline, alkaline, alkaline. Everybody's too acidic. And my first question is, do you actually know? Because there's two types of acidity in the body, right? There's the metabolic acidosis, which really is most likely only going to happen if you have kidney issues. And then there's the pulmonary, the respiratory acidosis. If you have issues with your lungs, your lungs and your kidneys are the big regulator on your pH balance in your blood, in your whole body. So when people are taking baking soda and, and Tums, where do those go? They go into your stomach. And so what you're doing, yeah, sure. Maybe you're in, Here's the other thing is like, why are you trying to bypass your body's own lactic acid threshold? Like work on that naturally versus overriding it. And in the meantime, while you're doing that, you're making your stomach the area of your body that you need to be acidic. And probably most people listening to this could do, could really use a more acidic stomach than they already have. So you're dropping Tums or sodium bicarbonate into your stomach and making it more alkaline just so you can override your body's natural lactic acid threshold right now. Work on that naturally. And don't, I, I really, really want to put this out there. Like if you are popping Tums and these kind of things like crazy and you have digestive problems, you need to go like go not to a regular GI doctor. I'm sorry. I don't know how to say it, but else in a better way, but most of them suck. I, I, that is the honest truth. They are not looking at the actual function of your digestive tract. They're just like, oh, you have acid reflux. Here's some, here's a PPI or here's take some Tums or whatever. Most of the issues for most people. Now there are some exceptions to this, but for most people, the issue started because they had too low stomach acid, which yes, absolutely can contribute to acid reflux. So to back all this up, if you are taking something that it's, you're just trying to become more alkaline and you don't even know if you need to become more alkaline. The, the likelihood of you even needing to worry about this is incredibly low unless you know that you have kidney issues or some sort of pulmonary issue and you've had your blood tested and you have issues with your pH balance. Like you know that for a fact. Otherwise, it is highly unlikely that you need to worry about being more alkaline, being more alkaline. Your body regulates this. If you are eating a somewhat <laughs> healthy diet, you're probably fine. And when you're taking things into your stomach that are alkal alkalinizing <laughs> it, what you are doing is reducing your digestive capacity. Don't do that just to override your body's own lactic acid, acid threshold. Just let that naturally build up. This question was because she was saying like, sometimes it burns when I'm lifting and I'm trying to like bypass that because I feel like I have a little more in me, but I stop because it's burning and I'm like, <laughs> Well, two things, you can either just gradually work on that or you can get more comfortable with that burn because that's not the same thing as muscular failure. I feel burning way before my muscles fail. It's like building a relationship with that of like, yep, I'm feeling this and that's just sensation, you know, but I haven't failed yet. So like, 
just want to drop that in your arena. When we're t- talking about all this alkalinizing stuff, it really concerns me. Because one, most people literally have no idea if they even need to worry about this. And we have this alkaline obsession. And I want you to think in terms of your stomach. You want that baby a to break down all your food and not cause problems down the rest of your digestive tract. And you're sitting, if you're sitting here taking all these alkalinizing things because you're being really good and you're getting more alkaline, you are misinformed. If you were eating vegetables, plants, healthy foods, even remotely, you are probably absolutely fine on your blood pH balance. Do not do something like that unless, what is this thing? Unless you absolutely know that you need to. If you're curious about it, go get tested. But don't just start taking a bunch of alkalinizing things in your stomach and dropping your stomach acid. The last thing I was saying on this, because I probably piqued some of your curiosity if you're like popping Tums and all these things to drop stomach acid all day. A lot of people, I'm not saying all, but a lot of people, the reason they're getting acid reflux and heartburn and all these things is because they actually have low stomach acid, low Because when that happens, you get dysfunction of your sphincters, this esophageal one and this pyloric one. Well, that's not where your stomach is. (laughs) But I'm just trying to show you guys. When it's not acidic enough, you get dysfunction of those sphincters. And that's when your body doesn't want undigested food to go down into your digestive tract. So it sits in there. This can lead to ulcers long term also. And so sometimes it will start coming back up because your body's like, "Uh -uh 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 -uh." it's not acidic enough in there. Okay, so look into that more if that's speaking to you. Just want to drop that in your arena. But the last thing, I mean, just recapping this whole thing, do not take alkalinizing things into your stomach because you're trying to alkalinize your blood, especially for something like athletic performance. Work on that naturally. You're reducing your stomach acid. You don't want to do that for no reason. Do not do that. Um, not only do we need stomach acid to break down food, we also need stomach acid to kill off bacteria. Yes. Thank you. So anyway, just want to throw that in your arena. Okay. Bye.